Hello students, hope you are doing great today and uh, I am Rashmi here, we will be dealing with an important chapter which is going to carry a maximum number of marks from your neat point of view. So it's one of the first PUC chapter which is biomolecules. Now what we will do is we will be listing out some important scientists and their discoveries with respect to this particular chapter which is biomolecules. So for your neat point of view this is very very important. So students you can please take out a notebook and a pen keep it with you. As I am telling the scientists you can also make a note of it and these are repeated questions which have appeared in the previous question papers. So we will start with the first scientist and the year. So 1999 we have one scientist called Gunter and Blobel. Okay. So what did these people discover? Discovery of I hope you are writing students discovery of intrinsic signals for proteins that govern transport and localization. Now what does this mean localization? So we have two scientists, Gunter and Lobel. What did they do? They are, they have discovered intrinsic signals, which means there are certain signals inside the cells which is going to deliver messages. Okay. What you understand is with neuronal impulse, acetylcholine is one signal which is going to deliver message to your muscles. Okay, for example. Similarly, there are various other signals which is going to connect messages from one cell to another. So these people have discovered certain signals for proteins which is going to govern transport and localization. That means which protein should go where? What is the role of this protein in giving a signal? Right. So this was the first group. In the second year, we are going to have 1994, the previous year actually. So this group was the first to discover but they published a little later. So later as in after this group has published, then they published this. That is why we don't take this up first. We take 1999 as the first year. So next we are going to have two more scientists which is Gilman and Rodbell. Okay, so Gilman and Rodbell were the first to actually do their experiment, but they never published it. So these people, Gunter and Blobel, published first, okay, based on the analysis of Gilman and Rodbell. What did these people do? They discovered structure and function of GTP binding proteins okay so what is gtp guanosine triphosphate usually majority of our energy in the body is in the form of atp right which is adenosine triphosphate but these people that is gilman and rodwell have found out it is not only atp but gtp is also involved in giving us energy which you will study in the plant physiology respiration portion that is your glycolysis and Krebs cycle comes there there we will take up this particular uh, energy molecule GTP that's going to give energy but it was these people that is Gilman and Rodbill who have found out this the next year it is 1993 we have Sharp and Roberts Okay, so Sharp and Roberts was one more group who have discovered or put in their part for biomolecules. What did they say? Discovery of split genes. Now, what is this split genes? In your second year, you will be learning more about transcription translation process wherein you will see there is a DNA, there is a mRNA and protein, okay. So this is the basic thing that happens in our body where DNA gets converted into 
mRNA and mRNA gets converted into proteins. Now in our body, mRNA is going to produce only one amino acid. So one mRNA gives one amino acid. But in the case of uh, prokaryotes or bacteria, one mRNA is going to give multiple amino acids. Okay, so we, it can be five, it can be six, it can be seven. So here we call the mRNA as polycystronic mRNA. Poly means many. And since one mRNA is producing many amino acids, we call the mRNA as polycystronic mRNA. But here in higher animals or eukaryotes, one mRNA is going to give us only one amino acid. So we call the mRNA as monocystronic mRNA. Mono means one. Okay. And this was discovered by Sharp and Roberts. Split genes means one mRNA producing multiple amino acids. So when they give rise to multiple amino acids, definitely multiple proteins will be formed, which does not happen in case of higher organisms. Next, we will talk of 1989. Here we have scientist Thomas Zeck. Zeck is written as C-E-C-H and S. Altman. Okay, two scientists, Thomas Zeck and S. Altman. What did these people discover? They discovered a non-protein enzyme. Okay, very, very important question. Now, what is this non-protein enzyme? We have only one non-protein enzyme in the universe. We know all enzymes are proteins. Without protein, there can be no enzyme. But not all enzymes are going to be derived from the same protein. So you can make a standard definition that all enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes, right? Proteins are not made up by enzymes. Enzymes are always made up by proteins. But here, please underline this part which is non-protein enzyme. And which is that enzyme? It is ribozyme. Okay, very, very important question students. It has been asked in four to five uh, question papers. It's a very repetitive question. Non-protein enzyme is ribozyme and its role is in translation process which will be taken up in the second PU topic. For now, you can make a note that Thomas Zeck and S. Altman were the two scientists who actually discovered this non-protein enzyme which is ribozyme. We'll move on to the next scientist. So 1985 is the year and the scientists were Brown and Goldstein. I hope you are making a note students, especially with the non-protein enzyme part. Now we'll see what Brown and Goldstein has discovered. Now they discovered regulation of cholesterol metabolism. Okay, cholesterol metabolism and endocytosis. What is cholesterol metabolism? We take in oil, lipids are there. Those lipids are going to be broken down into fatty acid and glycerol. Similarly, there is cholesterol form in our body when there is deposition of this fatty acid and glycerol. So most of your hormones, the prostaglandins, interferons, and also to an extent testosterone and estrogen have got small amount of cholesterols in them. Scientists have discovered that even the testosterone and estrogen has small quantity of cholesterol in them. Okay, But apart from this, if you consider pro prostaglandins and interferons, definitely they have a higher portion of this cholesterol. And what is the function of cholesterol in our body was discovered by these two people. Endocytosis 
means inside the cell whatever endo means inside cyto means cell so whatever is happening inside the cell the metabolic activities was also discovered we'll go with the next year which is 1982 so in 1982 we have a scientist called a klug who discovered the structure of nucleic acid so nucleic acid means most importantly it is your dna and rna let me write it here uh, dna and rna which is your deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid okay very very important because they are the ones which is going to be a part of your heredity without dna and rna no characters can be studied that is your genetics part so these uh, scientists which is Klug, it was he who discovered the structure of nucleic acid next we have 1980 we have three scientists berg sanger and gilberts three scientists who have discovered gene splicing technique what is this gene splicing technique? We will mark this also important because it is being asked repeatedly. Berg, Sanger and Gilberts. Splicing means splitting or cutting of genes. And what is this gene we are talking about? It is mRNA. Okay. Again mRNA. When mRNA is actually formed in our body, it is formed as a heterozygous nuclear RNA or heterogeneous nuclear RNA which means it is containing both coding parts and non-coding parts okay so in case of this splicing say there is a coding part non-coding part coding part non-coding part this is how it is produced when DNA is uh, converted into mRNA now this mRNA is going to remove all its non-coding parts non-coding means those genes or those regions which is not producing amino acid so earlier i told you that one mrna is going to give one amino acid now in that mrna there are regions which is going to give amino acid and there are regions which is not going to function at all that is what is non-coding region so what the splicing technique is going to do, it is going to cut those regions which is not going to code for anything. It is not, it is just there, okay, as a part of the transcription process. So we don't want to waste time reading these non-coding uh, frames. So we cut it out. Cut it as in it is automatically happening in our body. But that technique was actually given by these scientists when you take out the gene or the DNA out of the body, scientists work on cells outside the environment, then they do the same mechanism that is outside the body, they are going to do this technique of splicing. This is what is gene splicing. You are just removing the non-coding part of the mRNA. Now what you get, you will get a strand which is coding, coding, coding. So each of this will code for one, one amino acid. You don't have to waste time when you're doing this outside the body okay again mark this question important students now we have the last scientist in 1978 which is nadins smith and arbor this again is a favorite question being re uh, repeated all the time what did these people do discovery of restriction enzymes again restriction enzymes is a favorite question every year they ask at least one question based on restriction enzyme answer is the same but the type of question they ask is going to change answer will be the same but the question is going to vary now what is this restriction enzymes there are enzymes which is going to cut your nucleic acid say this is a dna this again in detail you will be learning in the second PUC. Now this is a DNA or say even RNA. It's a nucleic acid. Now there are 
regions in this DNA. How are the regions? In terms of bases. So, this is A, T, G, C, 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 G, G, G. Let us make this. And on the other strand, we have one more strand here. So, opposite to this, it is going to be complementary. Right? So, G, always remember A codes for T and G is going to pair with C. So, wherever there is A, you will find T in the opposite strand. Wherever there is T, you will find A. Wherever there is D, you will find C. Wherever there is C, you will find G. This is how the base pairing happens. So, this way you have these sequences in a DNA. Now, these restriction enzymes are like scissors. So, you will call this as molecular scissors. Okay. So, what does a scissor do? It is going to cut, right? So, when you add this restriction enzyme, it is going to cut this DNA. It is going to cut. Cut. Okay. Why are we cutting? For recombination, which you will again study in the second year. So, it is a very, very big topic, which you don't have to break the head now. So, right now, just know why restriction enzyme is used. It is used to cut the DNA. Okay. So, these are a list of scientists who have discovered various things with respect to biomolecules. That is, we are talking only in terms of gene. 